Hey guys, Phantom here, and today we're going to be doing a patch note review on League of Legends 10.15. This is going to be the first time I've done a patch note review in a while, and that's largely because in the past year, Riot has done very, very boring and tame patches for the most part. I think Riot is very satisfied with the way the game looks right now, has been avoiding for a while any controversial game changes. And... Because of Riot's new approach to the g how they're balancing the game, you could honestly have played one whole year ago, and there's a good chance whatever playstyle you used back then to climb is still completely relevant now. Th there's been a few champions and playstyles that have been nerfed, but I would say a good 70% of what existed back then is still relevant now, maybe even more. And that's been a big reason why I have been doing basically no patch note rundowns at all. You go to LS's channel and you can see that some of his patch notes are a lot shorter and kind of geared a bit towards comedy a bit lately. Not dissing his content, it's still good content, but y y you see that his approach to patch notes have changed quite a lot. I've seen other people drop patch note videos and overall I, I feel the way people are view these videos is largely changing just because the, the patches just aren't interesting lately. I'm probably going to make more content in the future, but that being said, that's just my views on patches. I feel the game has finally changed enough where I can say my opinion on the game. And this is actually a kind of interesting patch. So, first off, Lily is going to be released starting tomorrow. Uh, my thoughts on the champion are, maybe I'm just horribly wrong on this, but I think her numbers are a bit underpowered. I think her toolkit is cool and interesting. I think she she's an AP jungler, and I really, really li like that. Especially since I feel there's a lack of good and easy to play AP junglers. In fact, most of the AP junglers in this game are actually pretty hard to play. Uh, Elise, pretty hard to play. Talia, pretty hard to play. Fiddlestick's a bit more simple, but he definitely takes some practice to get into. So, I'm really glad that they're making a more simplified AP jungler that people can actually do in team comps, especially in solo queue, because it's really annoying when you want to pick an AD mid but you have almost no choice by default to play AP, just because there's a good chance your jungler and your top winner don't know how to play AP. So introducing more AP junglers to the game, and possibly even more AP top laners, is good and healthy for the game. So, I as for a Tolkien, I think it's going to be the same case as Volleybear, where her numbers are just not there yet, but the moment they fix and fine-tune her numbers, I think she's going to be a good champion. I think her toolkit is interesting, can do things. I, I feel this is just to be Volibear all over again. If you were gonna, because when I look at a champion, I I don't look at their numbers. I don't go, oh, this champion has a bad win rate. I look at their toolkit. I look at what can this champion become if it just gets the right buff. Because there's some characters where even when they're buffed, they're just very lackluster characters. Trindamir would be a great example of that. A very lackluster character whose sole purpose is to do auto attacks and nothing else. But when characters who have utility get buffed, very interesting things can happen in the patch notes. So yeah, going to be Volibear all over again, underperforming on release, going to get buffed, and people are going to see that this is actually a really good character. Um, Ophelia, so they're going to be nerfing the gun once again. Um, Sentry activation radius from 575 to 500. I actually think this is a really good and healthy buff because... Very often when Aphilios is having people approaching him while he has the Crescendum or the Chakrams, as I like to call them, is you walk up to Aphilios, he just throws out the Chakrams, and you're like, oh, I have to walk away now. And then they activate so fast that there's almost no time to even walk away. You're going to take like two auto attacks from them. So having the activation time set, I, I actually like that too. But it, where it gets more interesting is where the Flamethrower. So the Flamethrower is actually not having its damage nerf, but instead having the utility it has with Runon's Hurricane nerfed out of it. So Runon's Hurricane bolts no longer deal damage to all enemies they pass through. Splashes and normal Infernal Wild bolts still do. So I'm curious exactly what they mean when they write that. Uh, if that means that the moment the fire bolts do damage to their first ta target, even if they pass through it, it doesn't do damage to it. I actually think this is a huge nerf. That heavily reduces the damage he's able to do in team fights by quite a lot. But if it means something else, I don't know what else it could mean. 
then maybe it doesn't matter at all. But if, if this means what I think it means, where moment the fire du hits a target, it's not going to do damage anymore, that's, that's actually a pretty big nerf. Because it, it nerfs the AoE he's capable of doing by quite a lot. But that being said, um, actually, before I make my judgment on this nerf, let's just look at this next buff uh, or nerf. Uh, bug fix. No longer deals damage without going on cooldown. Ability to heal during the ability cap. Alright. That's just a bug. So, I actually think this uh, nerfs Aphelios to be a more fair champion. I still think he's an outright good character, especially if you pick him at the right points. Um, LS has been preaching that when you basically... Aphelios is a good counter to a lot of low-range melee comps. And I full-heartedly agree to this. And there, there's been a lot of discussion. Like, is Aphelios really as OP as people say he is? And I go on the side that Aphelios is one of the best ADCs in the game. And I actually do think he is quite good as people say he is, but not for the reasons that they say he is. I think Aphelios is good because ADC as a role is a very underperforming role right now. And I actually don't want to see Aphelios nerfed because the role itself is just not good. Um, when you, Especially when you look at the roster. Um, half of the marksman roster aren't even viable and are being outright replaced by mages and some bruisers like Yasuo and Syndra or Heimerdinger. Y you have classes that don't go bot lane that are performing better than more than half of the marksman roster. Twitch, not a viable pick right now. Quinn, not a viable pick right now. Caitlyn, while she's going to get buffed this patch, she has performances like before all these nerfs and whatnot, like five patches ago, definitely not a viable pick. Um... What's other marks I can think of? Jinx, while she has some nukes and crannies where she could be picked, but for the most part, not viable. Half of the marksman roster is not viable. We're also not discussing how, right after Worlds a year and a half ago, Saya took a very heavy hit in her W. Marksmen have been nerfed continuously, and so then what happens is you only have very few marksmen left that are able to compete at a competitive level, and nerfing the competitive marksman doesn't do anything to fix the problem. It doesn't fix solo queue, because it, it actually makes solo queue worse for marksman players, because what you're saying now is, hey, you have only two characters that are viable for solo carrying as a marksman player, and we're going to nerf that even further. It, it, this makes life harder for ADC mains. There's a lot of people who go, oh, if they just nerf Aphelios or Senna, my role becomes better. How does that make your role better? How does nerfing one of the most useful characters in your role make your life better as a solo queue player? That makes actually no sense. That's like saying you have the option to use a very nice sword, but you're going to exchange it for a knife. It, it, that's, that, that's not really good logic here. And so, I would prefer to not see Affiliates and Seta get nerfed, but instead see buffs go to the underperforming half of the Marksman roster. I would like to see an outright undo of the nerfs that Saya had a while ago, an undo on some of the nerfs that Kai'Sa had a while ago. I would like to see Power return to bot lane. But instead, we're just going to nerf every ADC in the game until the role just eventually goes into irrelevancy. Anyways, that's the end of that rant. Let's go to the next character. So, Caitlyn, she's being buffed a tiny bit. 62 to 64. Um, this kind of means a little bit because she's a crit marksman in the first place, so every bit of damage she gets is nice. But at the same time, 62 to 64 is not going to break this character. She's slowly starting to return back into the scene, but that's only due to the over nerfs that other ADCs are going to be getting. Caitlyn is not returning to the meta because she's better. She's returning to the meta because of how weak the role is right now. Um... There's just characters where, if they're returning to the meta, it's more so a concerning sign of the state of the role. And Caitlyn is definitely one of those characters. Um, Fiddle 6. So, reduced healing 25% against minions to 15% against minions. Um, this will... This is for, uh, blah, words, hard. This is 100% aimed and focused towards top lane and mid lane Fiddle 6. This doesn't really mean much of anything to Jungle Fiddle 6. I still think Jungle Fiddle 6 is a very formidable force. I wish people would try it out into competitive more often. I don't think it's as underperforming as people say it is. I think there's just one of those cases where there's a severe lack of practice in the character and how to play it correctly. Um, as for Lane Fiddle 6, the, the full tank version, um, this is actually a pretty sizable nerf and it makes it less of a do all global pick. Uh, but overall, I still think Tank Fiddle 6 is going to be useful in many situations when you draft it correctly. I don't think this kills the playstyle. Um, Gragas. So, 
I've been saying on my own social media pages that I think Gragas is a great character. Anybody who knows me can vouch for me that I think Gragas is one of the best characters in the game right now. And it really surprises me that he is not being played at all in competitive. And there's a lot of people who want to blame the character, but I would actually blame their performance. Gragas is one of the few characters in the game where if you play him incorrectly, it will actually backfire against your team. And so that's why if you don't have an experienced Gragas player on your team, it's just not worth it to pick him when there's easier characters in the game to execute. But two, which I would actually argue back, is that the character is so good and useful that it doesn't matter that you're not good at him. You should get good at him. Because if you can get good at this character, the amount of utility that your team is capable of having in its champion pool now is massive. And once again, we're seeing a buff to AP junglers, and this makes me happy because it creates the. It, it furthers the creativity that can happen in drafts. So damage from 0 0.5 to 0 0.6, that's pretty nice already. That If that was the only buff in this patch, I would say that's nice. Um, our explosive, explosive cast from 0 0.7 to 0 0.8. So you have two things in Gragas' combo that are being massively buffed. And lately, when you play when you play full P AP Gragas in general, what you really want is to get those items, scale up, and just absolutely murder somebody with pure raw stats with a well-executed combo. And the fact that you have two different abilities that are going to be used in that combo being buffed makes it so much easier to do that. Gragas is, full AP Gragas is going to be an absolute menace to the squishier characters in this game. Really, really excited to see these buffs. I don't even think he needs them, but the fact that he's getting them, cool. I'm just going to pick more Gragas. Very underappreciated character. I even think in solo queue, I'm going to return this hobby a bit. I think he's even good in solo queue. It's just, the, the mar th th this one ability alone, the level of punishment that happens with fucking up this ability is huge. And I think that's truly what scares people away from this character. And then they try to blame the character instead of themselves. Um, Irelia, so her bonus attack speed that she gets on her passive, going from 8 to 8, 10 to 12, 12 to 16, this is, remember you guys, remember this is a stacking passive, this is huge, this is massive, because this isn't just like one ability on itself, it's gonna, it's gonna stack and it's gonna reach a maximum, and when she reaches that full maximum on her passive, I think she just, if you were to make a list of top 5 characters in the game that just outright win slot fights, I think this buff alone puts her up there when she has her Bork and with end build turn online. Um, it's really hard for me to say the current state of Irelia I really is right now because I really should put more effort into studying her matchups, but a big reason why people stop playing Irelia is there's a lot of hard matchups that exist for her if you're not damn near perfect on Irelia. But I do believe with this buff alone, it makes a lot of her matchups more winnable. And I'm very excited to see what happens with the Irelia OT community if this actually makes them pick her up again, specifically in top lane. Um, Lee Sin. 12 to 14 seconds. Um, this is actually a pretty rough nerf. Um, this basically makes it so when you're playing Lee Sin, when you do use your safeguard, you gotta really make that safeguard count. Because there's a lot of times where Lee Sin players, or any um, people on any champion in general, where they'll just waste an ability because they can waste an ability. And basically the level of value they get out of that ability is not to maximum optimus, op optimal levels, I guess. Let's go with that. And so then they'll enter like a moment a couple seconds later where they go, damn, I really wish I had this ability. And for characters who have short cooldowns in general, they can get away with it because they'll be like, okay, I'll just wait until this ability's back up. But for characters like Lee Sin, where a good majority of combos in the most advanced Lee Sin players go into bread and butter of how they use safeguard, this is actually a nerf that can really matter in team fights. So I think Lee Sin, if you're not absolutely perfect on him, is already a kind of underperforming character in general. And I think even if you're really, really good on him, he still has so many struggles where a lot of people will protest against this uh, reference, but I think Broxa is a pretty talented Lee Sin player. And when Broxa went to Team Liquid, he demanded Lee Sin right away. And he got his Lee Sin, but then the enemy team responded, Smith responded with a Sejuani pick, and there was like a Nautilus pick on the enemy team. 
and it's really easy to draft around these things because like let's say he's facing a central one let's say he's facing a Nautilus. what does he actually do in that situation anytime he goes in now his q can get cancelled his w can be into uh, like basically all his abilities can be interrupted now and then even if he does get in there's nobody he can even kill and he's just going to get cc to death because he's not a tanky character himself and so that actually makes his nerf on safeguard matter even more because if his w is off cooldown he's in these sticky situations these tankier high cc characters can really punish him for his mistakes so this is a nerf that matters and people overestimate this character in general so after this nerf people might actually really see the weaknesses Lee Sin actually has and I feel for a long time Lee Sin players have just been getting away with murder just off uh, using safeguard um, Orn, so 36 to 33, this that really doesn't matter, the, this is way too tiny to matter, Orn is still a good character when you pick him in the right situation, he's a tank, he has decent matchups which is very valuable for tanks, because a lot of times tanks lose too many matchups which makes them unviable, but Orn has decent matchups, good stats, good character, amazing toolkit, amazing on scaling teams, this will not make you stop picking Orn. Will it make you stop picking Orn in solo queue? Not even that, because when you actually get the map on paper, um, I forgot the actual map itself, but I do remember recently studying this up. 36 to 33, is, uh, specifically Varmer, is not the biggest of deals. Uh, Recon, they're buffing the cooldown as passive. Let's see by how much. Um, 40 to 16 to 40 to 14. So basically, they're buffing the scaling on this passive. And that's going to be a little bit useful in the long term team fight, but this is more so a placebo buff. Um, I've actually been experimenting with Rakan and scrims, and there's actually a lot of cases where Khan is actually viable and is an actual nightmare in team fights. Um, I think people should already be picking Rakan more, and it just feels like I'm gonna have to agree with what other people said in their own videos that it feels like this is just a buff that's right saying, "Hey, remember Rakan exists. You can pick this character." Um, Shen. Um, this is actually one of the most scary buffs that are going on this patch. Shield value from 5101 to 70 to 121. I actually don't know how you mess up level 1 traits now with Shen. Level 1 to 2, Shen is just going to be an actual beast. I, I think Shen is probably going to return to one of the best characters in the game for top lane. You should be picking Shen. There's a lot of matchups that he can beat in the modern meta. I actually think he surprisingly has a really good matchup in two set. Very common character you see a lot. And one of the reasons why I really like him this set is because set is what we like to call a sweet spot champion, as I like to phrase it. Basically, characters like Aatrox where, or Darius, where they really have to land their abilities in specific ways to get maximum ultimacy out of it. And if they don't, they're heavily punished in either damage or utility. And with the way Shen moves and the way he plays, it's really easy for him to counter the pure raw offense that Set has, while making it harder for him to get those nice little sweet spots of maximum use of his abilities. So I think Shen is going to definitely return to the meta. I think he's already been, I, I've already seen him be played more in scrims, and really no reason not to play Shen both in solo queue and in pro play. I think this definitely makes him like an A S tier pick. Um, Skarner, um, I'm gonna be real. I pre-read all these buffs, and I think they don't matter for Jack Squat. I think with the current meta that Skarner is in, with the amount of utility and ways that people have to avoid him, I think Skarner is heading down a very dangerous path where he might actually need a major rework, because with the way his toolkit works, it's just... His R has almost no value. He has a melee Malzahar ultimate, and for the fact he has to walk in, like, y you have characters like Saya who have been invented in the past two years, where uh, she can press R and dash herself a little bit in the air, and just walk away from Skarner. And then if Skarner tries to get close, she can just snare him and walk away. Senna, she can literally just press W, and Skarner can't even click on her anymore. There is just so many new champions in this game that makes Skarner impossible to do his job. And then you have the fact that some of the older champions in this game actually counter Skarner. Lee Sin and Gragas just knock that little uh, that little crab away. Just knock the crab away. Like, don't, get, get, get out of here. Leave. That, that's what Skarner and Lee Sin says to Skarner. I don't, or you just have Sejuani. Like, so, so new characters counter Skarner? Old characters counter Skarner? I think the character is really not withstanding the test of time. I, he's really, there, there's some characters that age well in this game, and there's some that don't. And Skarner is really not aging well. Um, 
he, he at, at this point he's just kind of a waste of a character slot. Like the character looks boring. His story is kind of nice, but that, that that's really all Skarner has going from. His story is kind of cool. That, that there's nothing else to this character. His toolkit sucks. His looks are boring. It's just there, there's nothing to this character. He, he's he's a waste of a character slot at this point. He he needs a rework or he just needs to be outright dumped. Like this character is a waste of space. And holy shit, that was harsh on the character. <laughs> but I don't think I'm really far off from the truth. When one of the best Garner players, period, in the world only has like a 50% win rate out of like 4,000 games. And that's no diss to the player, that's a diss to the champion. Swain. So I also read this in advance, and F and chat for the mid and top lane Swain mains. I'll read what they actually did to this character, but people who have me added on Discord see that I literally have Swain as my profile picture with my face painted on it. I love this character so much, but Riot has chosen that they hate me, and they don't want me to be happy in solo queue, and I'm just not allowed to play this character anymore, so I'm just... Uh, I'm I'm just supposed to pretend he doesn't exist. So his movement speed is gonna be nerfed. That kinda matters a little bit because he's a very chasey down type character. So the less movement speed he has, the worse it is. Like that's rough. It's not it's not gonna be like the end of the world. It's not that much movement speed he's losing, but it's enough to like be like, God damn, if I only had ten more it's it, it's annoying. Ravenous flock, he's losing mana. He he can't he doesn't get mana off his passive anymore, so Mid and top Swain had to be super, super mana careful now how to use their abilities. His passive now scales with CDR now. It's 10 seconds at all ranks and then it goes down. But then when you consider the fact that it scaled was down to 6 seconds anyways, it's like, this really doesn't make a difference. Like, this actually doesn't really make a difference. Maybe at maximum CDR it had to do the math, but maybe you can get it down to 4 seconds now. I, I guess that's a difference, that's kind of nice. But, it already scaled in the first place. I, I'd rather have the mana than the scaling. Um, they fixed a bug. Uh, what bug did they fix? There's a lot of bugs. Lane can no longer pull enemies launched by blast cone triggered by themselves. That, you see, that wasn't a bug. That, 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 so, oh, whatever. That was just how you coded the game. But the rules of the game made it so it worked. So you're just changing the rules. Congratulations, it took you two years to notice that. Two years. G good job. Q, cooldown. So, they're nerfing the cooldown by every rank by one. That's whoopie doo, one second. I guess that max rank is really nice. Especially when you have CDR, so you can get this down to really, really low now. So, like, in a level one, level two... It, it doesn't really matter, but it, like late game, it actually matters a lot. So that's nice. Uh, hand it over, goes through champions now. That's actually really cool. So Q actually gets a big buff. This is actually a big buff for the Q. This is a win. But W, they're massively buffing the range from 3,500 to be scaling from 5,500 to 7,500 at max range. And but here's where the kicker is. Base damage nerfed by basically 20 at every rank, but in max rank 300 to 240, this is a huge hit to his damage, it's just, basically Riot has said, goodbye mid top Swain mains, hello support Swain players, so, fuck me I guess. Fresh, cooldown, 22 to 22, max rank 12 to 16, so, this doesn't really matter anyways, basically what this makes it so, if you're in a team fight with Fresh, you're probably going to use Dark Passage just once now instead of twice. Um, well, it's nice to be able to use ability twice in a single team fight. You, the fact that they didn't hit Q or E or like his damage or his tankiness, you're really not going to notice this nerf at all. Like, it, it, it's really not going to be noticeable. Uh, w, Twist of Fate, pick a card. Um, six seconds at all ranks to eight at rank one, but it will eventually rank uh, go back down to the full, it, it'll go back to what it used to be at the maximum levels. Um, 
So late game, you'll forget about this nerf. But in early game and mid game, you're going to be a little bit annoyed. And on Twist of Fate, this nerf actually does matter, despite the fact he builds CDR in some of his builds. And the reason why this nerf matters is because it's going to take him time to get 20% CDR. Is He's not going to get that instantly. And so since it's going to take him a little bit of time to get CDR, he plays a lot like in the ADC in fights. And his W plays a lot of, a lot of pl Twisted Fate players play like Vladimir players. And if you ever watch a Vladimir player, they do this in and out play style with their Q. And Twisted Fate players do the exact same thing with pick a card. So for the fact that it's going from 6 seconds to 8 seconds, and the fact that it's going to be at 7 seconds in the mid game team fight, it's going to make the play pattern how Twisted Fate plays a lot more awkward and a lot less consistent. So this really hits the consistency of DPS he can do in both lane phase and in team fights. So this is a nerf that matters. And at the same time, this nerf actually surprises me because it's not a nerf that's needed. Because, especially if you look at competitive and not solo queue, there's a lot of places where you can't pick Twisted Fate early. It just doesn't match the comp you're picking. It doesn't match what you're facing. There, there, you can pick Twisted Fate, but it's not just that. There, there's two types of picks when it comes to global play. Uh, free if you want to dumb it down even further. It's not viable at all. Just champions are just not good. And then you go into the two categories that do matter. Global and information, as I like to call it. Global means that this character is good in just about any situation. There's some counters, but it wins like 70% of its matchups. It's really easy to make a team comp around it. It's just, you can blind pick or pick this champion early and it's completely fine. We'll call those global characters. But then you have the second category where these are characters that are good when picked in the right situations. You want to, you, you don't want to be one them or R1 them. You want to wait to write R2, R3, R4, just somewhere around that range. You, you want to look at what the enemy team is picking first, right? And so then once you have some information to work with, maybe you can pick those characters. And that's where Twist of Fate falls into. So for the fact that Twist of Fate's not even a global pick and receiving a nerf, it's a bit of a bummer because it makes the situations where you can pick Twist of Fate even less. Um, you mean, so they're buffing the mana honor, long story short. If you want to get to the math on this, you can go to Freak's videos on YouTube. He will actually show you a proper guide on how this actually does change a lot of things about Yumi. But the long story short is this actually makes Yumi a lot more pickable. Um, it doesn't flat out undo the nerfs that she had, but Yumi players will appreciate the fact they have a little bit more mana to work with in lane phase now. And like other people have suggested, this also pushes her on a more mana AP focused build so she can actually profit off this buff. And so big winners when it comes to the buffs and the nerfs. Let's scroll to the top. So Gragas, huge winner. Caitlyn's like, it's cool but doesn't really matter too much. I really could be a potential winner. Shen is a huge winner. And then everybody else is just eh. The nerfs that are really going to matter here is... Twisted Fate really matters, Aphilios kind of matters, Fiddlesticks kind of matters, Lee Sin kind of matters. Uh, but I'd say Twisted Fate's probably the biggest loser out of these nerfs. And then as for my thoughts on Lilia, I think she's going to underperform, get buffed, become a good character, just like Wally Bear. Um, as for items, um, so Spell Thief, Frostbang, Sharp. So the mana is going to be buffed on Spell Feast Edge and Frostbang. That's ironically also a buff to Yumi. That, that's actually ironically also a buff to Yumi. So Yumi players will really like this. Um, and then Shard of True Ice actually gets a whopping extra 5 AP. So basically what this does here is when Riot first reworked the pat, uh, the support item, it was actually better for so AP supports to get the tankier support items. They were just actually better because they gave AP and tanky stats. Uh, but then with some of the nerfs and the buffs, people started taking Spell Feast Edge more. But you still had some people who still preferred to tank your stats off of the item. But now with this buff, I think it really solidifies that if you're a mage support, you're 100% taking Spell Feast Edge in just about every situation. So this kind of undoes the debate of Spell Thieves or the other item? It, I'm, I'm having a huge brain fart right now. Forgive me. I can't remember the name. So Spell Thieves or the tanky item? Spell Thieves or the tanky item? That, that now, it's just really not much debate here. You take Spell Thieves. Then Runes, they're nerfing the cooldown on Unsealed Spellbook by quite a bit. 
Um, this actually does... Well, it, it matters it doesn't matter. It matters because it's annoying, and it makes the, the, the rune less OP. But it doesn't matter because the people who did take it are still going to take it. So, it doesn't matter because you're still going to do it. It does matter because it sucks. But it doesn't suck enough to make you not want to take it. So, yeah. Big winners of this patch. Um, Yumi, I guess, is kind of a winner now, too, when I look at the changes to spell feeds. Gragas is a winner. Shen is a winner. Um, losers would be Twisted Fate. He's still going to be an alright character in some situations, but kind of bummed it happened in the first place. It, it, it was cool to have Twisted Fate back in the meta. Uh, it's a character that I feel even the fan base appreciates watching playing at the most efficient of levels. So, I'm Phantom GG. That is my patch rundown. I hope you guys found this informative. If you have any questions about the meta, feel free to hit me up at any time. Have a good day.